Well, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our very first Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen. I am so excited to be here with you. I should tell you who I am uh, in case we haven't met before. My name is Noreen Smith and I'm the new Product Development Creative Manager here at Creative Memories. And I'm seeing lots of comments coming in already. So yeah, give us a little like and a thumbs up. Say hi and tell us where you're joining us from today. And we'll be getting started here just after a few more, uh, a few more of our friends join us. So super exciting to start this new weekly live series. And I guess I'll qualify that by saying, you know, there may be the odd week where we don't do a live together. But for the most part, we're going to get together at this time every week to do some kind of fast and fun project, usually focusing on all of the new tools. So there, I see lots of good friends joining here. Judy from Boston. There's someone from uh, Brisbane. Uh, it's Creative Memories Home Office is here cheering me on. Thanks, guys. We've got people joining in from all over, so I'm so glad to see you. Cheryl from uh, Pennsylvania. We've got some folks watching on the YouTube channel. There's Lisa from California, Karen from Colorado, Roxanne from Arizona. Congratulations for finding me, and thank you so, so much for joining us. So, yes, we are going to be here every Wednesday uh, at 5 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you mark your calendars for that. And you can join us. You've heard me say that there's some folks on YouTube, some folks in Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook, you're in the Virtual Crop Facebook group, you'll also want to go over to the CM YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and join and subscribe and all that kind of good stuff and click the bell so that you're notified every time we go live or we post a video, okay? And if you're watching us and joining us on YouTube today, make sure that you go over to the Virtual Crop Facebook group and request to join because there's so much good stuff happening in there. Hello, everybody. There's a fellow Calgarian. Hi, Jerry. Good to see you. We've got... Um, Gwen from North Carolina, good to see you, Gwen. Thanks so much. And we've got Sue, Don, Chris, and Michelle that are live and joining us together from Minnesota. So that's so much fun. I'm glad you guys are getting together and watching together. So we are going to, as I said, um, get together every Wednesday. And most often, we're going to play with the new products that have just launched. So for example, today, we're going to be playing with the envelope and bow creator. But I don't want you to worry if you don't have what we're working with because you'll always be able to see the replays. So in Facebook, the replay will stay in the videos tab. If you can't find it by scrolling through, you can always click on the videos tab. And then on the YouTube channel, again, just click on where it says videos and the most recent videos will, will show up. So you can always go back once you order your products and receive them. If you want to come back and, you know, review something or if you want to make the project together with some friends or if you're a CM advisor, you want to make it with your customers later on, you're going to be able to come back and watch it anytime. So we're going to have a nice little library of these fast and fun projects for you to reference, okay? All right, so it is, oh, I'm so glad to see everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. So today what we're going to do is um, we're going to play with this. I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to give you kind of a, a bare bones, you know, uh, refresher on how to make the envelopes and bows. But we're really going to focus on some of the other things that the envelope and bow creator can make. So I did put in the description, and if, if it's not clear, I'll make sure I go back. There is a video on the CM YouTube channel that tells you how to make the envelopes and bows, the basic instructions. So if you haven't seen that yet, you might also want to watch that just as a bit of a refresher. Okay. And then we're going to make four things together today. We're going to make a tab. We're going to make a tag. We're going to make a card and I'm going to show you how to make a box. You are going to love this new tool. And I do want to tell you that it is hot. It's flying off the shelves, and I think once it's gone, it may be brought back at a later date, 
but I don't think there's any plans to reorder in the near future. So if you like what you see today and you want to get in on this, make sure to grab your envelope and bow creator. Okay, so I'm going to switch you over to my table. You should be able to see the fantastic new tool and my hands. And we're going to play here together for a little while. So I can kind of get rid of this box here. And let me just tell you about the envelope and bow creator. And we've also got the bone folder here. Now you can purchase the envelope and bow creator separately. You can purchase the bone folder separately, or you can also get it as part of a buy it all bundle where you get some pre-cut envelope papers, uh, envelopes that or sorry, papers that can make six, four by six envelopes. So that's kind of a standard size of envelope. Uh, then you can also get the craft dots, which creates five by seven envelopes. So there's a five by seven card and the fun little dots inside. And then you can also get the, the uh, slimline card, which is the chevron. Sorry, I'll move that over a little bit. And that is for slimline cards, which are three and a half by eight and a half. So those are great, great things that you can get as part of the buy it all bundle. But each of those things is also sold separately. Okay. So, and again, I believe that the craft papers will be um, available ongoing uh, as long as we have them. But as, when once the envelope and bow creator sells out, that's it for a while. I think it may come back down the line, but you'll want to grab it while you can. It's hot, hot, hot. Okay, so let me just show you a couple of things that I made um, just to showcase how many fun things you can do. Now, of course, you can make bows of all sizes. And these were all made with the uh, Party Time Bright and Party Time Craft papers. Okay, so you can see that there's some little ones, some big ones. Some of them I flattened out a little bit so that you could, I could kind of let you know that you can put these right on your scrapbook pages or cards. And then others we've kind of really puffed up so that you can see that they're perfect additions to your gift packaging. Now you can also kind of angle the tails of them to kind of make them look more like a tied bow. So that's really fun as well. And besides the envelope sizes that I just showed you, of course, you can use um, any paper and you can create envelopes for any size. So here's a little three by four variety mat pack card that I actually just made into a little gift card. And then I made an envelope and I closed the sides of the envelope so that it's a little top loading style. And then here's another one. I made a standard card. Um, and created an envelope from those fun kind of multi-tonal pages uh, that come with the party time. And again, I mentioned you can use these as well on your scrapbook pages. How fun is this to have a nice big envelope with your title popping out? You could also, you know, put photos inside there, uh, have the embellishments spilling out. All of those would be great ideas. So these are all some examples with party time. So I'm just going to slide those off to the side here. And I'll show you a few more examples with our beautiful seasonal sightings collection. And of course, we're all starting to think about Christmas. So... We've got Christmas packages, we've got Christmas cards, we've got Christmas papers, um, pages, sorry, scrapbook pages. It's all going to be a fun, fun thing to use. So again, here's some examples of some different sizes. Here, I've just kind of added a strip of a contrasting paper across the bow maker uh, long piece just before I made it into the bow. And here I've actually added two sort of tails. So again, you could even, you know, stack these up and create a fun multi-layered bow. Wouldn't that be beautiful on a package? I think this would be really, really fun for all of your Christmas packages. And then I thought, well, of course, we want to be able to make some little gifts. So what about creating a little tea 
you know, cozy or tea caddy. Uh, or for those of you who drink hot chocolate like I do, you might want to create a little holder for some hot chocolate. And that would be a lovely little gift to give to your colleagues at work, uh, your, your kids, classmates, all that kind of stuff. And for these kinds of envelopes, what you'll want to do is you'll want to start with the measurement of the item that you're putting inside. So after you watch the envelope and bow creator video, you'll know that you start making the envelope by finding the size that is closest to what you are looking at or what you're working with. So again, this little hot chocolate package is about two and three quarters by four and three quarters. So I would look on here to kind of see what is the closest size here. So maybe it's going to be two and a half by three and a half because I'm going to let the top stick out or maybe I'm going to go to something more like um, three by four and a half just to give it a little bit of extra wiggle room. Once I find my size then that will tell me what size of paper I should start with and then it will also tell me where I should start on the punch guide and you'll see this in action in a couple of minutes when we actually start making our projects but isn't that fun? I think this would be a really fun way to add favors, um, you know, at an event, uh, or again, little gifts. Now you can also make, as I said, cards and envelopes of any size. So maybe you've got a pretty little gift package that you want to send, and you don't need to send a full card, you just want a little, you know, to and from. This little card that I made is just three inches square, and then I used the coordinating paper. I just love those cardinals. Uh, I use the coordinating paper just to create that little envelope where the um, it can just tuck right inside. And then if you have a really decorative paper, you could use a label to do your addressing or even uh, a little piece of white cardstock like I had there. So again, any size envelope. And what if you have, you know, a little gift card? Sometimes it's nice to just slide those into a card, but what about creating a little envelope that is just sized perfectly for the actual gift card. And then you can have a nice embellishment on the front. And it's just such a nice way to present that gift card instead of, you know, just kind of, you know, taping it into a card. The other thing that you could do is you could actually take a card. This is one of the uh, cards from our Deck the Halls ki uh, card kit from this for this Christmas. And you could open it up and then attach the envelope inside here so that again, it's like a gift within a gift and they could open up the envelope and then the little gift card would be inside. So that's really cute. And again, for a gift card, which I think measures about two inches by three and a half. So you would look and see, yeah, that very first one there, two inches by three and a half, you would just need a little five inch square of uh, paper to make that little envelope and you'd start by lining it up at the two inch mark on the punch guide. So again, so many different things. I also wanted to just show you that you could take a, a bunch of envelopes and just make a little envelope mini album and these little pockets inside the envelope become little pockets that you could add your um, you know extra photos to and these were all made with just one piece of paper cut into six inch squares and then we used three inches on the punch guide so that's fun and then finally just one more example of a large envelope right on a scrapbook page. These are some of the cards that we received last Christmas that I want to keep and I want to include them in my scrapbook but I probably won't pull them out to look very often. So I love the idea of tucking them into the envelope and then if I'm using a top loading page I can actually just reach in and pull out the card or if I've got this attached to an album refill page, I could just pull the page protector off and then access the cards. So there are so, so many ways that you could use the envelope and bow creator. And I'm just in love with all of these little fun projects. So let's talk about some of the more sort of non-traditional ways that we could use it. 
So how many times have you wished you had a little tab? This is a variety map pack card and a journal card inside a peekaboo pocket. And the idea would be that you would attach that to the outside of your layout. So you've got it down and you just want to kind of indicate that someone should lift it up to see what is on the other side. So we can use the envelope and bow creator to create this little tab and it couldn't be easier. So I'm just going to start with a little two inch square piece of paper. I'm just going to fold it in half. You can really make these in any size and one of the things I would encourage you to do is to grab some scrap paper, scrap cardstock, scrap designer paper, and just play around with it because you're gonna find so many different um, sizes and you're gonna you know, experiment and you're gonna say, what if I did this, all right? So I encourage you to just kind of play around to see what you can create. All right, so now I've got the fold at the top, the open part at the bottom, and I'm gonna use the notch punch that is over here on the side. The bottom part of the punch is for notching your envelopes and bows, and the top is for rounding the corners. And again, we're gonna look at that a little bit more in depth when we uh, make the box a little bit later and the card a little bit later, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this short side of our little folded tab, and we're gonna place it inside the notch punch. Now on the notch punch itself, you can see that there's a few little uh, markings. There's a little center line, and then there's these little sort of wings that come out on the side. So we're just gonna take that short side, slide it in, and we're gonna match it up with the center um, marking, okay? Go ahead and punch, and you see that we have kind of a reverse notch. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Just line it up with the center line, okay? And now we have what looks like the top of a little uh, file folder. And you may recognize that shape. Of course, we have the new memory tabs, their adhesive tabs, as part of the back to school line. So, but you can make your own from whatever paper you want. Then you can just um, add your adhesive along the back and then you're gonna just fold it over. I'll do it on the side just for an example here. You're gonna kind of just match it up, fold it over and press to it here and now you have a little tab. It could go at the top of a photo, it could go on a page, it could go on a peekaboo pocket to, to remind the viewer to actually lift and move it, all of those kind of things. So a tab is a great little thing that you can make with the notch punch on the envelope and bow maker. Now, what about a little tag? Now, of course, we have our fantastic three-in-one bevel tag maker, but if you don't have that handy, or if you need to make larger tags, this is a great tool to have. So what we're gonna do is just start with a piece of paper. This one is two and a half inches by four inches, just a little piece of beige cardstock. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the tab. We're just gonna take, if you want the, the tag part to be up at the top here, you're just gonna take the side, line it up with that center marking on the notch punch. There we go, that's one side. And then we're gonna do the same on the other. And again, you can make that little tag sort of top on anything, on any size of tag. You're not limited just to the two and a half inches that our tag punch will allow. So then I have a little piece of coordinating decorative paper. Again, this is I think from the tonal seasonal sightings. Three inches wide by two inches. I'm just gonna adhere that on the back. And I'm just gonna kind of line it up so that it's in between the top edges and bottom edges. And then you'll just need to grab a hole punch from your office and maybe a little bit of twine and you've got a fun little tag. And I just embellish this with a couple of stickers. Oh, what fun, and there's Santa waiting. So of course, you can make your bows for your packages, but you can also make your tags for your packages. Isn't that fun? And again, tags are great on your scrapbook page as well. Okay, 
Now, we've made tabs, we've made tags. What about a card? Now, we make envelopes for sure, but how about making a fun little card that looks like a mason jar? I love this because it is it just really ties into the trend of that mason jar style. You know how at Christmas time we have little mason jars that actually have the little shaky snow and maybe a fun little ornament in it? Well, this would be perfect to create. So you can use a, a already made, a, a ready-made blank card, but I've got a little standard card uh, made just from some beige cardstock. So that is really easy. You're going to have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock, and then you're going to score and fold down the middle. And again, the bone folder really makes a beautiful fold. I know so many of us are used to using our multi-purpose tool for, you know, these kinds of little card projects and things. But truly, once you start using the bone folder, you're going to see how beautiful that crease is and how, um, how you know, professional it looks. I keep coming back to the word professional, but I, I think this envelope and bow creator just makes everything you do with it look so professional. Okay, so now I have a piece of the seasonal sightings. This has the cardinals and that fun sort of taupe snowflake. And this is basically measuring the same size as the card front. So I've got four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so the idea is that's going to go on, on top. But first we're just going to cut a small little strip from the top. Get out our 12 inch trimmer to do that. And I'm just going to cut about three quarters of an inch. Okay. And then I'm going to flip that piece over. I'll put my trimmer away. I'm going to flip that piece over and that's going to get attached at the top of the card. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. You can always cut off any overhang. You can see that I have a little bit overhanging there, so I'll just trim that up with scissors later. And then for the base of my card, I'm going to just add the rest of that piece of paper with the snowflake pattern. Okay, so again, uh, you know how to trim this off. You can either use your trimmer or your microchip scissors. These are never far from my side. We'll just give a little trim, a little haircut here. Speaking of which, I'm going for a haircut tonight, which I'm very excited about because my hair is getting a little bit out of control. So I'll give a haircut to my card and then I'm going to go for a haircut tonight. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a notch right at the place where our two papers meet. And we're gonna do it on both sides. So the side that opens, I'm gonna slide that up, and I'm just going to match the seam between my papers with that little center, center uh, alignment guide, okay? And I'm gonna notch it. Now it's going through an extra layer of paper because we've added the decorative paper on top. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, okay? Lining it up right at the seam. And then I've got this funny, it almost looks like a milk jug. That would be another fun thing you could make, a milk jug, jug card. So now I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to trim off from the top to the side where the notch comes down, okay? And I think you can start to see how we're getting our mason jar shape now. The last thing we have to do is corner round it. So I'm going to go ahead, slide it into the top of that punch, and I'm going to round all four of my corners. Super easy. And again, I know we have our two-way corner rounder, but everything is right here. So it makes it so easy to, um, to do everything at once. So here on my card, that's really it. But here on my card, again, I've just taken some twine and I've just tied it around what would be the neck of the mason jar. So you could do that if you don't have any twine, not a big deal, you don't need it. And then what I also did was I just cut a little piece of white cardstock. 
I used the 12 inch decorative trimmer and I just kind of placed it in there sort of randomly to get the swell of, you know, a, a snowy sort of hill. So I'll just go ahead and round the two sides here and attach that to the bottom of my card. And that's really the base of the card. So now we've got our little jar, our little mason jar. We've got our little snowy um, accent. And you know, you could go ahead and just add a sentiment. In this case, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little tree. Just kind of planning my placement here. And then I've got two little snowmen left from my, um, from my embellishment pack. I'm just gonna kind of overlap them here and then I'll attach them with some foam squares. So I'll just pop these on here. Take off the backing and then add those to my card. And then I think it would be really cute to have uh, a little star up in that snowy sky. So wherever you like, maybe overlapping here or maybe there. I kind of like it when it overlaps. And then I just took for this one, I just took my uh, rosy red dual tip pen and I just kind of outlined that little bit of snow. So super easy. And, you know, I think <laughs> I think it's just too cute too, Debbie. You know, I, I love mason jars. We see them around. They haven't stopped trending so to create your own little mason jar cards. And then of course, where did my envelopes go? Of course, you could create your own little envelope out of maybe more of that Cardinals paper. And then it's just gonna tuck inside because it's a standard size card. So how fun is that? Another use for our envelope and bow creator. I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of little mason jar cards being created and sent. All right, love all the extra stuff. Mason jar, so excited to see you. Hello, joining from Las Vegas. We've got folks joining from Brisbane at this point now too. Love it, love it, love it, love, love, love. Thanks guys, I'm so excited that you are enjoying this. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to make a little box. Now, here's the thing. The idea of an envelope and bow creator is not new. These, these types of punch boards have been created by other companies. But here's why ours is super, super awesome. So first of all, it's a nice compact size. The arms on the scoring um, lines flip open and then snap back into place. So really easy and again, keeps it compact. The stylus that is included it just pops into its own little built-in pocket. So that comes with the board, and that's what you're gonna to use to score. And remember that the bone folder, if you buy the Buy It All bundle, that's going to come with it, but you can also get the bone folder separately, and it is a great thing to have. So I like to use both. Now again, you could use your multi-purpose tool, but all of these tools make it so easy. Okay, now the other thing is that because it has those two arms, you can score two times. So on each side that you have to do your scoring on. So on other um, envelope and bow boards or punch boards, you only have the one scoring and usually I think it goes down. So you actually have to do, you know, more scoring and more rotating. Here, the two lines really make it super fast. And I have to say, that this notch and uh, corner rounder punch are super easy. It's just effortless. You know, you don't even have to put a lot of pressure. So it really is an awesome, awesome tool. So let's talk about boxes. I just have a little sample box that we're going to uh, create together. And you can see that I've just kind of layered a couple of bows and put a ribbon a ribbon, it's a piece of paper, around it. So I'm gonna show you how to create a box. Now again, this is something that you're going to want to do um, some examples of, okay? I have a little 
extra bow and a little strip of paper that I'm going to add around it at the end. So I'll just leave those up there. And then I just have another little template without anything on it so that you can kind of see. And I'm going to open it up. You can just see that I use a piece of scrap paper, scrap cardstock, to um, actually create this. And again, that's something that's really easy to do so that you know how to make them. You, you can check the size. And again, if you're a CM advisor, you'll want to know how to do this so that you can coach your customers. Okay, so that is what it's going to look like before we fold it. So we're starting with an eight inch square. Okay, always for envelopes and boxes, you're going to start with a square. So definitely keep that in mind. And for this size, we're going to use the three inch mark on our envelope and bow creator. Now the idea for an envelope is that we take one corner and we place it on the punch guide at the marking that it shows on the chart. Okay. And then we score. Where's my stylus? Did it roll away? Oh, I put it back inside. <laughs> All right, so let's pretend we're making an envelope first. So we placed it at three. We're going to score down and across. So we've been able to score two times in that one sort of pass. And then to make the envelope, we are going to take the opposite corner, turn it, place it back at three, and then score again. Okay, and then that's all the scoring you would need to do for an envelope. Then, I hope you can see this, I'm going to try to tilt it so you can see, but everywhere where the score lines intersect, you're going to have a little sort of X. I hope you can see that. And the X is going to slide into that notch. The little wings really help us place it properly because they're going to line up with the diagonal score lines. So again, I know you can't see it very well, but I can feel it and I can see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch. So I'm going to show you that that's where you punch. Right where the little X would be is where you make your notch punch. You'd notch at each of the four corners and then fold in your envelope and you're done. Okay, so that's the idea. So we've just finished um, doing two sides. So we're going to do the other two sides for our box. We have to score at all four corners. Okay, so we've just finished this one. I can see and feel the score lines. So I'm just going to rotate it one more time. And there we go. And then I'm just also going to find the last one. I think this is it here. So instead of just doing it twice like you would for an envelope, we would do it on all, all of the sides. Okay, and I'm pretty sure I've got them all now. Okay, so let me see if I can tilt this so you can see that there's a number of score lines now. So there's actually four score lines going in this direction and four score lines going in that direction. That means we actually have a bunch of intersecting X's. So we actually have to notch an extra time. So there's one on that side. I've got one more to do. And I know we're just at about a half an hour that we've been together. I would say we're going to be about another five, five or seven minutes, something like that. And each time we get together, um, I'm, you know me, I like to try and make sure that everything is, you know, quick, fast, easy. And I don't want to keep you, uh, you know, for too long. So 30 minutes to maybe 40 minutes would be the most that we would do. Okay, so this is what our box template looks like now. So we've got two notches on each side and we've got four sets of score lines. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm not going to go over them with the bone folder, but I'm just going to go ahead and start folding at all my creases. You would want to go over them with the bone folder to make them nice and neat. But just for this demonstration purpose, I'm just going to show you. So here was the one that I took apart for you, and here is the one that we just made together. Now I think you can see that we're going to fold it up, and we're going to fold up the sides. But these little pieces in the corners kind of interfere with that. So we have to do just a little bit of surgery, a little bit more haircutting. 
So I'm just going to cut a little piece away from each of those corners, okay? And that makes a little tab that is going to allow me to fold the corner and it's also going to give me somewhere to put my adhesive. So I'm just going to go around. You can do this however it feels right for you, but basically I'm just cutting that little shape away from each of the corners to give myself a tab. A couple more here. Doesn't take long with your multi-purpose scissors, multi, sorry, all-purpose or micro tip. I'm using the micro tip today. Okay, and now you can see that I have, oops, I didn't cut all the way through here. Now you can see that I have my little tabs. I'm saying tabs a lot today. Those little tabs are what's going to allow me to uh, adhere the box together. Okay, so basically it looks exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and put adhesive. I'll actually get this out of the way here. And I'll go ahead and put adhesive on all of my little tabs. I'm just going to put them on this way. This is where you want to be nice and generous because you don't want your box to fall apart. Okay. And now we can go ahead and actually I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do it the opposite way from what I folded. Sorry, I should have done the adhering on the opposite side because we want the tabs to go to the inside of the box. We don't want to see them on the outside. So you're just going to kind of fold them over and then press firmly to adhere them down. And you do have to kind of be, you know, a bit of a ambidextrous, multidextrous to do this just because we want to fold and adhere at the same time. Okay, and the last one there, fold it and adhere. And then just use your fingers to pinch all of the corners down. So now they're lying nice and flat inside. You can see how the tabs are lying against the sides of the inside of the box. And then really all we need to do is close it. Now this feels a little, you know, a little, um, not flimsy, but it does feel a little bit skewed. So once you actually put your little gift inside there and then fold it over, you can add a little bit of adhesive on each of the corners. And again, just kind of pinch it to hold it together. And then we'll do the same here. And you just get your fingers kind of underneath to pinch and hold it together where a little pair of tweezers might come in handy. And that's your box. So then you could come in with your paper strip. Let's just kind of tuck that around and just fold it around, kind of crease at the corners. A little bit more adhesive. And then we can add our bow on the top. How cute is that? You might want to use a foam square for something like that. I think that's what I did here. And again, you could add a tag that we made or a little gift card. Where'd my tag go? There it is. So I could add my little tag there and then my present is complete. So I know that again, there's no instructions for the box, but I really encourage you to just play with it. Get some, um, you know, scrap paper. This is the back of a cover sheet from last, well, actually, I don't even know if that's last year's, from the Festive Plaid Paper Pack. I like to just keep those cardstock inserts, paper inserts, and then I can use them to try and figure out all of my measurements. And then once I've figured them out, I can just write myself a little note that I started with an eight inch square and that I start scoring at three inches. So then I can keep this as a bit of a template for the next time I want a little box, I know what size box I can get from an eight inch square piece of paper. Okay, so we've done so many things together. I hope I've given you a bunch of ideas. Where's my little tab? There they are. So I hope I've given you some ideas for using the envelope and bow creator. Um, 
you know, in some new and different ways. And as I mentioned, if you haven't already seen the how-to video on how to make envelopes and bows, you'll want to make sure that you go and see that, okay? All right, so that was a lot of fun. I'm so glad you were able to join me for this first live. I have a feeling that there might be a run on those envelope and bow creators. So again, they are hot, they are selling fast. You'll want to make sure you order yours so that you can do all of these fun things for the upcoming Christmas season. And make sure to order some of the seasonal sightings as well, because it's just such a beautiful, traditional, and elegant collection. And it's gonna be perfect for so, so many, uh, you know, packaging, uh, cards, you name it. It's gonna be great, okay? All right, so now we're gonna to get together again next week. And here's what you'll want to have ready to go. And now remember that if you don't have these items, you can always go back and watch the videos later. But for next, uh, next Wednesday, October 26, we're going to be creating an entire eight by eight album. We're gonna, we're gonna make basically our own fast to fab eight by eight album using a, a fast album formula. So you're gonna wanna have an eight by eight album cover of your choice, as well as some refill pages or pocket pages. And I'll just mention one thing there. The pocket pages come with an eight by eight inch insert. So if you don't have your pages, you can always cut some of your white cardstock down to eight by eight and then order your uh, pages later and you'll be able to just slip them inside. Then we're gonna use one package of designer paper, so 12 sheets, and any coordinating stickers or embellishments. Now I'm gonna be using Happy Hauntings. We're gonna be making a Halloween album, but I'm also gonna share a version done with seasonal sightings for you. So you choose what you want to um, what you want to actually use. This fast album formula is gonna be able to be used with any paper and stickers. And then really the only tool you're gonna to need is your 12 inch trimmer. You may want to have a border maker cartridge and the original border maker system, but those are optional and we'll talk about that next week, okay? All right, everybody, I am so thankful that you all joined. There's nothing worse than that feeling that, oh my gosh, what if nobody comes and plays with me? I'm so glad that you all came to play with me today. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, right here, again, Virtual Crop Facebook group or the Creative Memories YouTube channel, 5 p.m. next Wednesday, October 26th. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. And we will